Okay. Uh, my name is Sarah Teer. I'm the Community Development Director at Habitat for Humanity of Huron Valley. And a lot of people are familiar with Habitat for Humanity as a nonprofit housing organization that builds and renovates homes for low-income families in our community with a lot of work from volunteers. And then we sell those homes with a 0% interest mortgage that we finance at Habitat and hold um, for the term of the mortgage. We've been working here in Washtenaw County since 1989, and we started then building one new house every other year. And in 2009, we switched to rehabbing homes because of all the empty, vacant homes that were out there. It didn't make any sense to build a new house when there were so many foreclosures to purchase. So after that switch, um, we've been doing rehabs entirely, exclusively. This year, we'll complete 17 renovations. And that'll bring us to about 150 houses that we've done since our inception. So the HUD Challenge Planning Grant has helped us with some community planning in one neighborhood in Ypsilanti that I'll talk about in a, in a minute. Um, in coordination with the building efforts that we do, we're also part of a larger effort that um, involves a lot of Habitat affiliates in the United States called the Neighborhood Revitalization Initiative. And that initiative asks us as Habitat to respond to the needs of the community, not just with housing products, but what else can we do or how can we facilitate bringing change about in a community, change that the folks who live there want to see, not something that's imposed from an outside um, source. So locally, we adopted the Neighborhood Revitalization Initiative um, program, and we started, like I said, renovating homes in 2009. And most of our work at that time was done in one community in Ypsilanti called Galt Village. And as the map up here, it's um, north of Ford Lake, south of the highway, and west of Harris Road. There's 954 households in the community. And to date, we've rehabbed 22 houses there. We own another 10 that we're renovating that'll be sold to families in our program. And we were looking then for ways that we could be a bigger part of the community, not just to do renovations. So we, while we were there, we heard from other people who lived in the, in the community that they were having trouble repairing their own homes or doing energy efficiency upgrades to their own properties because they may not have had the funds to pay a contractor up front for extensive uh, new furnaces and water heaters and insulation. So last year we launched a critical repair and weatherization program. And in Galt Village, we reached out to homeowners who were interested low-income families, and we offered them the chance to have this energy efficiency work done and repair work done, and then they would repay back a portion of the cost of that to Habitat over a six-year, 0% interest loan. So we helped 23 families in Galt Village last year keep their houses warm and safe, and we also replaced one roof, and we did 10 exterior home improvement projects as well. In addition to improving physical structures in the community, we then started working with the residents in the neighborhood to find out what they love about their community and what things they would like to see changed or improved to make it an even better place to live. So our role in this community development work is really a convener to bring people together, to give them a chance to talk about issues, talk about what's important, connect them to other resources, connect them to neighbors that they may not know, and help them bring about the changes that they want to see happen. So the neighborhood residents are the visionaries and the leaders and the change makers, and the Community Challenge plan Planning Grant gave us some funding to help with this community development planning process. So our housing work there gave us credibility. People had learned to trust the Habitat name, and had seen us making good change in their neighborhood. So that gave us you know, one leg up in the process. The community itself has a very active, long-standing neighborhood watch group. They've been meeting for, I think it's over 17 years as a neighborhood watch, and they have monthly meetings, which we started attending and talking to other residents um, about this idea of getting people together to make change in their community. 
And then we looked to people to join a steering committee that we were forming. So the Neighborhood Watch coordinator joined. We got some other folks from the Neighborhood Watch meetings to join. And the Neighborhood Watch puts out this monthly newsletter. They hand deliver it to all 954 households by block captains. So we put information in there about the steering committee and the inf um, interest in getting people together. So we had some other people recruited through that. And our steering committee then met a few times to talk about what's the best way to reach people. And we decided to do it through neighborhood-wide open community planning meetings. So we sent postcards like this one um, out to everybody in the mail. We also put the information in the newsletter. One of the residents made a flyer that they delivered to the local businesses and the faith organizations. And we made lawn signs that we stuck in people's yards to let them know about the upcoming event. And our first planning meeting was held in May of last year. And we had about 65 people attend from the neighborhood. And what I heard later was that it was really a different group than those that are normally engaged through the Neighborhood Watch, which was encouraging to see that there were people who wanted to come out and have their voice be heard, but who might not have been the regular folks who had been attending the Neighborhood Watch meetings for so many years. So the, we held it at a church right in the neighborhood, so anybody could get there by walking or driving. Um, we had a local restaurant cater it, and we had door prizes that were donated by local businesses and some local individuals who are artists. And we had a lot of great ideas that night. We talked about what do you love about your neighborhood, what are the assets of your community, and then what would you like to see it become, or what would make it even better place or, and stronger. And the main thing that really came out of that first night was people wanted to know their neighbors better. They wanted to build relationships. They wanted to know who belonged and, and feel like they were part of a strong community. So building on that, while our steering committee was still meeting, we started doing these neighborhood walkabouts. And this is an idea that one woman on the steering committee, she had done one in a, when visiting a friend in another city. It's a very simple idea. We highlighted two blocks on one street each month. We did, and the folks who live on those two blocks, we had them be hosts, and they would be outside their house with a treat or some lemonade or some herbs or flowers from their garden, something for the other people to just walk about and meet each other. So we had three walkabouts over three different months um, on three areas in the community, and we're setting up a schedule to continue those, obviously, once the weather gets a little bit nicer. Um, and then while the walkabouts were happening, we we're also doing door-to-door -door surveys. So part of getting more input from other folks who may not have been able to attend a planning meeting or may not have wanted to voice their information in a public way was to do it through surveys. Um, so we worked with some youth from the Michigan Works limited work experience program and residents in the community to actually go door to door and to either administer surveys one on one in an interview style or we'd leave the survey if people wanted to do it and then we would come back and pick them up. While the surveys were being conducted over about a six week period of time we were planning our second meeting which was held in July. And we had it at the same place. We also had food there. And the intent of this meeting was to learn what had happened at the first meeting and what we, information we'd gathered from the surveys thus far. We also advertised it. The, the neighborhood has a garage sale, a neighborhood-wide garage sale in the summer. And so coincidentally, it was happening one week before our planning meeting. Um, and so we were able to put flyers out at all the garage sale sites and have everybody who was participating in that as shoppers and as sale folks um, advertise it for us. We had about the same number of people come out, um, different people, some of the same from the first one. And at the second meeting, we asked people to prioritize the ideas that were important to them about changes that they would like to see. And then to set up next steps for action items to happen in the community. So since then, right now we've, after the planning meetings, the steering committee continues to meet and we're formalizing that community action plan, 
which we'll then present at another planning meeting um, early this year. Some actions have already been started by groups that wanted to get going. So the walkabouts that I mentioned, a welcoming committee is in the works right now to welcome new people who move in. And the there's a yard and garden club that started up. They had a, a leaf raking event in November. Um, some residents have had block parties, um, potlucks in their communities, and we've also started to get some trash cans installed on one of the streets that's um, been a problem in the past. So for now, what we're doing is just continuing to work with that community and help them continue to create change in their own way and the way that they would like to see it happen. Thank you.